Hey, what's up, Game and Trend? We're over here at the Origins Game Fair, and we're talking to Bree over here at the Arcane Wonders booth. Hi there. And she's going to talk a little bit about some things that are releasing, um, that, that have released here, but are also coming up uh, in the next few months. And we want to talk to you just about all the things Arcane Wonders. So, Bree, we're over here in the lounge. What yes. do we got going on over this here? This is the Super Kawaii Pets Lounge. So this is a great place at Origins or now at any of our future shows to stop by, take a, take a seat, relax on the couch, see cute kitten videos and get a demo of Super Kawaii Pets. Yeah. Which is a 15 minute card game where you're adopting sad animals and trying to make them happy. They are, this game was designed by a former, a group of former Magic the Gathering pros. Okay. So what they wanted was a game that they could play with their kids, but that was still strategically interesting for them. Yeah. So there's chaining, there's, there's like ways to plan between turns. It's not just about adopting sad animals, but they are the cutest animals you've ever seen, especially when you make them happy. So in the course of a game, is it a two player, four player? How many people can it play? It plays up to four. Up to four. Yeah. And about how long does it take to play? 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, we're always looking for those great little, uh, you know, the interactive games and teach some kids some strategy and exactly. some things. That we have another one of those coming out at Gen Con. I'll awesome. show you in a minute. All right. Sounds good. Well, we're going to keep moving around the Arcane Wonders booth. Let's go take a look at their next game. All right, we're over here at another table taking a look at Mezzan, which is one of the Gen Con releases for Arcane Wonders. And I'll tell you right now, this is a beautiful game. So what is Mezzan all about? So Mezzan is a region in northern Siberia, and this is an art style that came from that region. The, the idea is that they use red clay and black soot to make the art. And so the whole game uses this red, black, and white art style. Yeah. Uh, and I just, oh, it's I, beautiful. I find it completely entrancing. Yeah. Uh, so in Mezen, we are, everybody will have a grid of five by five grid of matching tiles. So they won't, they'll be randomized, but we have the same distribution. As the active player, I have the active player reindeer. This will be that I choose one group of, I choose an animal. Okay. Everyone, and it's by the way, plays one to five. Uh, everyone will then choose a group of that animal from your uh, grid to take the tiles out and flip them over, drop the tiles above it down. Mm. So yeah, let's say uh, I chose, okay. let's say I chose horses. Yeah. So you're going to pull it out. Gotcha. And flip it over. And I'll do, I'll do this, I'll do this one. Right, so I'm gonna flip it over, uh -huh. drop them down, and then you can put them back in whatever order you want. Now we're going to score the first scoring card. There are a total of 10 rounds. Uh, okay. So this is the current round, this is the next round. So in this round, we're scoring for fish in the middle nine spaces uh, of the board. Okay. So you know that before you decide what to take out, so you yeah. can plan to try to score for this round, you can also be planning for the next round. Cool. If I call an animal and you don't want to take it out, you can pay me one of your amulets mm. to choose a different animal. Okay. But that's only for you. Gotcha. So if a different player also wanted to do that, they would also have to pay me an amulet. The right. amulets can also be used to connect and disconnect groups. So you can put an amulet on a tile to say, I have... Like, let's say I have here, let's just say it was like this. Yeah. And I have these three chickens mm -hmm. and someone called chickens, but I'm going to score for these two in the corner in the next round. So I don't want to move them. I can just put this on here to say, this is no longer a chicken. Uh, just for this round, it's not mm -hmm. a chicken. Yep. And that also disconnects this one. Gotcha. So then I can take just this one out gotcha. and flip it and keep these where they are. And then this gets discarded. Yeah. These are also worth one point at the end of the game. So right. there is some value to holding on to them. Uh, but you can also use it to connect groups. So if you have like, here's some fish and here's another fish. And I want to flip all three of these. I can connect them with that. Yeah. That and then I'll be yeah. able to take all of these out. But you and wouldn't then, want to do that in the first round because of all those fish. Though. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. I've gotcha. Uh, so. And then there's also on the backs is all the same animals, but they're in on the black. Plus there's a spruce, which is a wild for connecting uh, groups. Okay. So can you, can you flip different colors at yes. the same time? As yes, you're going you through? absolutely just, uh, can. And okay. in fact, 
there's some benefit to trying to be consistent because at the end of five rounds, you're also going to get one bonus point okay. for every black tile you have in front of you. Yeah. And at the end of 10 rounds, you're going to get a bonus point for every white tile you have. Oh, uh, okay. So at the beginning of the game, you start with all white. You're going to try to flip as many to black before the end of round five. And then you want to flip them back to white before the end of round 10. That's awesome. This seems right up my alley. I'll tell you what, right? Just awesome. beautiful. Happy to hear that. Yeah, I just love it. Yeah. There's also a ton of variability in the gameplay because each of these cards has two icons on it. Ah. These icons appear, each one appears on 12 cards. Okay. So let's say we decided to play with the suns. Mm -hmm. We're going to take all of 12 of the sun cards, shuffle them together, deal out 10. Gotcha. So even if you play with the sun cards again, there might be two cards you haven't seen yet, mm -hmm. and they will certainly all be in a different order. Yeah. But then we could decide to play with this X instead. Mm -hmm. Well, then this card would still be in play, potentially. Right. But it's going to have a whole other set of cards that goes with it. Right. And that helps to keep things from getting too bunched up because there are like, there are five different ones of these. Mm -hmm. There are five different ones of these. Yeah. You don't want to have five in a row that's just fish in the middle, chickens in the middle, you know, yeah. first, or, uh, hedgehogs in the middle. Yeah. So that helps to keep it a little more even. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I could say the, the, the pattern building, there's just the different uh, strategy of moving them and placing them, uh, not to mention just the aesthetics of the game. It's beautiful. And I love how you can tell the different player cards by the shape of the yep. patterns. There's and the, so that shape also yeah. corresponds to your scoring tip. Oh, okay. That's, that's a beautiful way to do different colors, especially while keeping the theme consistent throughout the game. So I'm looking forward to this one. I'm going to make sure I can get one of those. And there's limited copies at Gen Con. Limited yes. copies at Gen Con. Absolutely. Well... This is beautiful, but we still got a lot more that we want to take a look we at. Sure so we're going to move on to the next game uh, at Arcane Wanderers. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at Vegetable Stock, which is another uh, Gen Con release that's going to be there. And uh, this is a nice little card game. I'm assuming that stock means we're talking about stock market. A little we sure are. So, all right, so what this do we got going here? Vegetable Stock, we're going to be playing the Vegetable Stock Market. This is a Dice Tower Essentials game. Okay. So this is a game that was hand-picked by Tom Vassell. Mm -hmm. He thinks should be in every gamer's collection. That whole line is published by Arcane Wonders. And we have actually a couple more Gen Con releases that are also in the Dice Tower Essentials line. Cool. So Vegetable Stock was originally released in Taiwan. Okay. We are localizing it. And we have, for anybody who's seen it before and is thinking, the game sounds familiar, but it looks different. Uh, we've completely revised the art. So we have replaced the... Original art with more of a cuphead style, like okay. 20s animation, yeah. uh -huh. rubber hose yeah. art style. In vegetable stock, you are drafting cards with vegetables on them from the middle of the board. There will be one more card than there is the number of players. And after every player has drafted one card, the remaining card will determine which stocks increase in price. So if this was the last card, tomatoes would go up by two, carrots would go up by one then we would discard this and deal out a new market. Right. At the end of the game, all of the cards that you've collected will have, the, you'll get points for their market value. But if a card, if a price reaches five and needs to go higher, mm -hmm. the market crashes. <laughs> so what you want to try to do is increase the value of your own cards while causing your other, like the vegetables your opponent is collecting to collapse. So how many people does this one play and um, yeah, about how long does it take to play? It plays four in like 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so a quick little uh, stock market manipulation game. I exactly. love that kind of stuff. So, well, cool. And this will be uh, available at Gen Con as well? Yep, limited copies at Gen Con. Limited copies at Gen Con. So make sure you guys get a copy when you get there. So. All right, well, we got a chance to see three games on the table, but you are not limited to those three games right now. You've got a couple more coming out that are... That's, that is right. So we have two more games coming out of Gen Con that are both Dice Tower Essentials games. Okay. First one is Video Game Champion. Video Game Champion, you are a 90s kid trying to spend as much of your time and money as possible playing video games. But you have other responsibilities. Okay. So you've got to balance doing your chores, doing your homework, going to visit grandma, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, and playing and beating video games. Okay. You can uh, rent video games. You can buy magazines that give you <laughs> cheat codes that make it easier to beat the video games. It's an action selection game. So there's going to be a grid of buttons. Buttons look like uh, Xbox controller buttons. Yeah. And when you choose a button on your turn, it will align with either an action on one side or above or below. Yeah. And you'll choose one of those actions to take. 
those actions can be any of the stuff I already listed, mm -hmm. playing and beating games, yeah. uh, renting games, going to visit your grandparents, uh, and begging your parents to buy you games. Yeah, so renting obviously. games is the only really affordable way for a kid to True. play video games, but they can... You can beg your parents to buy you a game, and if you do, you have to take three IOUs, uh, and they fill three spots in your eight-spot inventory. Okay. And that's where you keep your buttons. So since you need the buttons to match patterns on the bottom of the video game cards, the more buttons you can carry, the more likely you are to be able to beat your video games. Okay. So the pattern matching would be like three consecutive red buttons. Or okay three buttons of the same number, but different colors, gotcha. or uh, maybe up to five of them. So okay. some of them are harder than others. Yeah. Uh, you can also play a game, which means you just play the first two buttons of the game. You get to put a played token on the game, and that will help you beat it more easily in the future, because it will act as a wild button in the future. If you played it, you already know how to play it. So now when you go to beat it, it's easier. Yeah. Same thing with the cheat codes. It gives you it's wild, but makes it easier to beat. That's awesome. Well, that's speaking to my 90s kid heart, you know, right there. It was like oh, my... Very much leaning into the 90s. Oh, my of. gosh. Yeah. And, like, the games are all not quite real games, <laughs> but they will definitely trigger that, like, oh... I remember that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> for sure. Oh, that's good stuff. I'm excited to see that one. Fantastic. Hopefully we can get that on the table and, and, and get some videos for you guys. But that'll also be available at Gen Con. Yep. And you have one more that's releasing as well? Sure do. Yeah. So the last one we have is, again, a Dice Tower Essentials game. This is Foundations of Metropolis. Okay. Foundations of Metropolis is the retail version of Foundations of Rome. So if you're familiar with Foundations of Rome, giant box, big chunky building minis. Mm -hmm. Foundations of Metropolis is the same game in a smaller box. Now it's polyomino tiles instead of minis. Okay. So you've still got the same gameplay. It's got a new modern theme uh, and the smaller footprint. Yeah. So it's going to take up less space on your shelf. It's going to cost a lot less. Yeah. Uh, and it has the same trays. So one of the things, one of the big features of Foundations of Rome was the buildings all fit onto a player tray that was also the storage. So you could finish a game, and when you put all the buildings away, you're setting up the next game. Yeah. We have preserved that cool. in Metropolis. Yeah. So you're still getting a player tray. Now you're laying all the polyominoes back mm -hmm. into the tray, storing them in the box like that. And then at the beginning of the next game, you're just like, oh, you want to be yellow? Here's everything you need to play yellow. Let's play. Okay. Awesome. So, well, it was a great game, and you're looking forward to seeing all the stuff that Arcane Wonders is coming out with. And so, if you want more information, check out their website. Make sure you stay tuned to Gaming Trend for more gaming news, previews, and reviews. And hopefully, we'll see if we can get some of those copies at Gen Con. There's only limited copies, so make sure you guys get there soon uh, to their booth and check out all the other stuff that Arcane Wonders is doing. 